Okay, so you are living in Arizona. You have your real name now. Your family's around. You're writing a book. And then you start doing interviews, the biggest of which is the Dan Sawyer interview. Yes. And that was a huge deal. Because that was your first ever interview at that time? Yes. You know, you were recently witness protection. There's money on your head because of the whole cooperation thing, you know, against the Gambinos and, and some of the other crime bosses. Why did you decide to do something as high profile as Diane Sawyer? Why? I mean, I, I don't know. I was doing a book. I talked with Peter Moss, and he thought it was a good idea. When I was in prison, I was introduced to Peter Moss to do a book when I got out. Who did it was ABC, producers there were friendly with the government, and I became friendly with them. They introduced me to Diane Sawyer. They were doing me a lot of favors while I was before I got out. When I got out, um, they asked, you're doing a book. They introduced me to Peter Moss. They helped me a lot, and they wanted to do an interview. And uh, they did help me a lot, so why not? Okay. What happened after that interview came out, though? Well, I blew up. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got a lot of tremendous amount of views. Nothing negative. Of eventually, uh, something happened. Eventually, uh, but it was later on, a uh, hit team came down looking for me. Mm -hmm. uh, they found me. Um, I was always ready for them. And some of the guys who were on that were in my crew. And uh, this guy, Huck, and he said, I'm not going near him. He knows what I look like. I'll guarantee you he has a gun. I guarantee he's not going to run, and he's going to look to kill us. The guy who didn't know me who was going to do it, it kind of scared the shit out of him. He didn't want to come near me either. So they sat with it for months and months and months, and uh, they couldn't get it. They couldn't find a spot. You know, let me just go back one second that when I moved out of that fancy apartment, um, I went with my daughter, I was looking around, and I found a place in a pretty rough neighborhood, a Mexican neighborhood, and uh, when I looked around that spot, I kind of liked it. It was like prison in a way, brick walls. I said, this fits my needs. I, I'm comfortable here. I could see everything around me, and I'm comfortable. I'm a hit guy, so it, it was good. I could see anything that's going to happen. I got a little bit of an advance notice. so. When I lived there, when I was moving in there to that, um, I think it was the first day I was moving stuff in, I hear shots. I turn around, I have a pistol, I take it out, and I look by the door, and there's a black guy running, and one or two Mexican guys chasing him and shooting at him. They're dealing drugs from this spot, or whatever they're dealing. And this guy's maybe try to rip them off. I don't really know the story, but that's what happened. I go back in. It's none of my business. <laughs> but unknown to me, the apartment right next to me in his yard was the head of this Mexican group. Hmm. And it was his guys. And I came back the next day, completing the move. And uh, a couple of hours later, I was getting in my car. And I see this pretty tall, well-built Mexican guy walking towards me. I took the gun out. I put it right up against the door, cocked it. When he opened, came in, I opened the window. I said, how can I help you? And he said, you were here yesterday moving in. I know you see, saw the, heard the shots. I saw you come by this door, and you were watching it. And the cops, when they came and talked to you, you said you're not, you didn't hear nothing, you didn't see nothing. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And he left. <laughs> I put the gun away. Another day later, he came back again. And uh, he walked up to my car, same situation. And he said, I know who you are. <laughs> he said, you're Sammy the Bull. And then he said, listen, we're having a little barbecue in our, my family, all the guys. Come over, meet us. He said, uh, let me tell you something. This is my spot. I got four or five guys here, backup guys and stuff. 
If you're not coming here in this alleyway to buy drugs, you're either a cop and we harass the shit out of them so bad that they show their badges. If there's anybody looking for you and they're not looking to buy drugs, then I'm making it out of this alleyway. I took it as almost like a protection thing. It was good mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. So I decided, I spoke with my wife. I got some Italian sausage and bullshit like that. I went to the party. <laughs> I didn't think they would do anything. Their wives, their mothers, their kids were there. I said, I'm going to go in there. She says, you going in with a gun? No. No, I'm not going to do that. He's there with his family. It's disrespectful. I went in there. I ate with them, met them all. When I would come home 12, 1 o'clock at night, I would come in the alley, park my car. I had a brand new Lexus, never got touched. And I was coming into my yard. I would see guys on the side. And they're standing there, they bang their chest, giving me a sign, like, you know. And uh, so they loved me. I, they, I became one, I wasn't one of them in their mob, but I became one of them, accepted by them. So I was sitting real cool there. When I got arrested in that apartment, I had a three fifty seven Magnum. I'd lay down with my dog, go to bed. I was by myself. And I got busted. They were on my indictment. There's five other guns loaded in every part of in the kitchen, in the bathroom, the living room. I knew there was guns everywhere that were loaded. Thinking when they come down, mob guys, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna duke it out. I figured John would Gotti would sooner or later would send somebody. And like I said, I'm a hit guy. I'm ready for it. So and that's in my indictment. I got five guns and the 357 that I'm sleeping with. Um, matter of fact, the day I got busted, my dog is it's growling, a little six-pound dog, mint pig. But it was, he knew something was going on. I got up. I went by the blinds with the gun. I moved the blinds a little bit, and there's fucking 10 fucking police cars, helicopters, and I'm about to get arrested for this ecstasy shit. 